I'd say that his uh, medium wages and average wages that he throws around often include uh, managers that are on absurd salaries, you know, in network rail there are people on three times what the Prime Minister earns. I know the medium wage of an RM team at the is about a thousand pounds. I know we've got members out here on the minimum wage or a little bit more. And if they don't get a pay rise, it puts up with inflation that's a pay cut. Right now, if we had a pay freeze, inflation is around 10%. They're going to be £2,000 more stock next year, and no political party has any appetite to help these people. So, what the choice do they have to fight for themselves? Obviously, if the government don't engage with us, the strikes will have to continue. But fundamentally, they can engage with us. They try and wash their hands and say it's not their problem. But we know they've tied their hands on the companies so that they cannot talk to us and make us a reasonable offer. So until we get a reasonable offer, the strikes will just have to continue, I believe. Um, you know, they say there's no money. They say passengers aren't coming back. Passenger numbers are at 90% last year. People like the companies that are running the trains, they paid out a billion pounds during 2020 to 2021, or around a billion pounds. And that was, that was, my phone is going up, I'm sorry. So they paid out around a billion pounds in dividends. So that's money that's gone straight out of the industry. It could have been used to reinvest in the industry. You know, it could have been used to invest in belt and time to invest in the railway. We face a climate crisis, there's talk about emissions charges in big cities. It's not the time to cut rail infrastructure, it's not the time to cut safety, it's not the time to cut accessibility, it's the time to double down on investment. And we see the Department for Transport saying we're going to invest £14 million pounds in reopening new lines, but in reality, £14 million, pounds, I don't think we need to build a mile of track. Do you feel like you've been a bit of a good critique considering these working steps on the rail and the Yes, it is. It's definitely a kick in the teeth to hear that uh, we kept the country moving in the pandemic. Now you've got to have a pay freeze. You were lucky you weren't furloughed and so forth. But the logistics of furlough in the entire rail industry would have put everything to a standstill long after the industry wanted to reopen. You know, if you furloughed everyone, the tracks wouldn't have been maintained. Every train driver, every conductor, every member of a train crew needs retraining in passenger safety, they need retraining in personal track safety, they need to relearn the routes that they work on, they need to re read the rule book for the railway, which is massive. You know, furloughing people in the rail industry would have cost far more, and to suggest that we were lucky because we weren't furloughed is absurd, because if furloughing us would have been absurd, it would have crushed the rail industry. Um, so it, it's it's a it's a nonsense argument, really, uh, when people try to, try to counter our point that we've been working throughout the pandemic and obviously we believe everyone working whether they worked throughout the pandemic or not needs to pay rise to keep up with the cost of living. I can completely understand people's frustrations and obviously we don't want to cause um, disruption to people's lives but we've been backed into a corner um, to do this and it, ultimately we're not just fighting for ourselves and our own jobs you know a job isn't yours you borrow a job that's my view and my belief you borrow a job and you should leave that job to someone else in a better way you found it or as, at least as good as it was when you found it you know and we're fighting for our communities because if these attacks on infrastructure happen on maintenance staff if they, they close every booking office in the country the railway will be less safe and it will cut off accessibility for millions of people Yes, there is a there's a very real threat to cost to maintenance staff, which is absolutely absurd. We have a very safe railway, one of the safest in Europe, I believe, except for Ireland and Luxembourg. Last time I read an article on that. And we want to throw that away for some reason. And I think that reason is purely profit-based and purely for ideology. We're the safest railway in the world. Luckily accidents are very rare. They don't often happen, and when they do, it's a tragedy that the whole industry feels. And if we cut this, these maintenance stuff, we're cutting them away from having the safest railway in Europe. We're throwing it away just for profit, which is absurd.